Hello, and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench we have this thing, which is already halfway torn apart, that we're going to try to put back together and also see if it works. Um, this is a HP 6826A bipolar power supply and amplifier. So it'll do plus minus voltages, it'll also do amplification, so you have an input and an output. This one's a little bit of a mess. You guys are joining me halfway through the teardown process. I've verified the fault, and I went digging. I thought this was going to be a really easy repair. One couple of components and done, thinking it might be a control, because I've had a couple of HP power supplies where the voltage potentiometer kind of leaves the chat and quits working. So I figured a quick test on the uh, voltage pot and replace that, and we're good to go. Well, not quite. So what ended up happening is I flip it over and there's our first culprit. That's what we need to go after first. So what we need to do is I need to finish tearing this down and I'm at the point where to tear this down any further, I actually have to unsolder this transformer and pull the hole so the pass elements are back here, transformers here. This whole thing is going to cam up this way and these ribbon cables are going to disconnect it from the bottom interface board and that'll give us access to this bottom board so we can get at it. I want to check these caps. I want to check those caps. There's resistors there that I need to make sure haven't been burned up. These resistors right here have gotten exorbitantly hot. They've scorched the uh, PCB on the bottom side and I'm pretty sure there's a 1 ohm sense resistor that, uh, not sense resistor, but a 1 ohm resistor that is burned up and gone, but we'll check that out. Um, the symptoms on this thing are it does output power, so the pass elements are working. They're not, well, they're not open, uh, but I have no control. I, I, can, I can control the current, so on the current side, I'm good. On the voltage side, I have no control. It's stuck at 60 volts, and it's just hammering it 60 volts positive out the front end. So it's a 60-volt supply at the moment, but uh, that's what we're tackling now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this documented so I can get the power transformer put back in the right place. And then we will go through the assembly process as I put this thing back together. Uh, together. I did not think this was going to be this interesting a video. So in the beginning, I didn't turn the camera on. I just got started. I will not do that from now on. If it goes on the bench, we'll hit record just so we can bring you guys neat repairs and faults and push some things forward. So let's go from here and see what we can get fixed. Well, that doesn't look good for these caps. So... That's 48 volts coming out of my IT28, which is set to 50 volts and should be about 56, 57 volts. So we're watching it kind of reform as it's going, but this cap is definitely tired. If I switch it to mini lytic, we'll see the voltage start dropping. So we have a uh, high resistance across this, uh, this capacitor right here. I have the DMM monitoring the voltage across the cap. So we have high leakage in the large power filtering caps. So that's bad. Uh, these caps are not cheap. So I'm going to have to see what a... Uh, and I don't stock any here in the lab. So I have to see what these are. And see about getting some replacements. So that's disappointing. Okay, since we've proven the leakage high from the usual suspects... I didn't want to use the SMU for this one due to just the size and the capacitance. If this is fully charged and it goes bad, it could damage the input on the SMU. So I wanted to be kind of careful. I got away a lot less expensive than I thought. A uh, cap of not the same connections. It's going to be a snap cap as opposed to a screw terminal cap. But uh, it was five bucks a piece, which isn't horrible for a cap this size. I was expecting around 50. But if we take a look with the Atlas, 3869, this is a 3000 microfarad cap. It's reading way too high. Cap's not an overachiever. By the way this measures, if this is extremely high, the cap's leaking. So something to watch out for. When the test equipment can lie. Uh, it's a function of just how it measures capacitance and uh, 
the DC leakage of the capacitor makes it look like it has a higher capacitance than it does. Uh, didn't even need to use the SMU though because it failed on the IT28. So now I have to wait to, for the delivery guy, but through the magic of the camera, you guys will find out what happens as soon as he gets here. Okay, so we're at the point where we're putting the puzzle pieces back together and I have most of the power supply and output put back in place. Using the peak tester, I checked all these pass elements. They're actually testing fine. They all test like transistors. Uh, their HFE is fairly low, but that's not to be surprised with the age of the parts. They're sitting around 12, 13, a little bit around there. I still need to replace these two capacitors here, which probably is going to be the next thing we tackle. But what that tells me is none of the pass elements are shorted. We have, they're being told what to do. So I have a control problem not a pass element problem. That's good and bad. Good because I don't need to source pass elements, which would be hard. Bad because I have a fault somewhere in here that is causing the board to go kind of haywire. So we're going to have to take a look at the control board quite a bit to see if we can't get this thing up and going again. All right, we're back somewhat together. Uh, getting this thing put back together was actually fairly difficult. Reading the panels, I was able to figure out which way they went back on. A couple of other things that may have been an error in my taking some things apart. We have a new capacitor, or I should say new capacitors, in place for the 200 microfarad by 250 volt. And I'm waiting on, I'm still waiting on uh, the 3000 mic replacements. They have not arrived yet. I know more about this resistor that's caused us some problems. We have a fair bit of scorching on the board here. Um, there's two zeners I want to check, actually, this this one being one of them. And uh, I'm not 100% sure what this does in circuit yet, although I do know the resistor in question is R60 on the A1 board. And... It is involved with this relay. The relay is actually testing okay. Just ohming it out on each contact so the contacts aren't burned up. But this thing got punched with heavy current. Now, that resistor is completely, is, is right across the output of the power supply. Which is one of the reasons why it's such a high wattage. It's 3 watts, 1 ohm. It looks like it goes into somewhat of a biasing network because the relay spawns off to one of the boards through the connector and on the other side of this relay we also have some biasing resistors capacitors and a zener um, that also go there and are fed by the plus 20 volts unfiltered rail one thing that could cause this resistor to burn down like this would be if one of those zeners shorted and all of a sudden it loses a reference and goes absolutely nuts and decides to burn down. That has happened before on this channel, actually. Um, on my Fluke 5200A, one of the high-voltage 190-volt zeners shorted out and uh, took cascade failure the negative uh, 190-volt rail. So something we have seen before and is not completely uncommon. This is the resistor in question, and it's pretty cooked. So, the board cleaned up moderately okay, given the fact that it was well over temped and fairly scorched. And uh, I'm really worried right now about traces. We have quite a bit of damage here, and I'm not sure if any of the traces got burned up and grenaded, so I'm going to have to look through it. But I'm really, I really want to make sure we didn't do any damage completely disassembling everything. So I need to get some capacitors replaced. We'll do the replacements on these orange guys. Still waiting on the white ones. And then we'll go from there. Hopefully we can get this thing off the ground. Although, where we're at right now, because I have the meters out, we have fantastic access to all of these switches. So as always with vintage equipment, it's time to service the switches and the contacts get them up and going again. Okay, interim testing to make sure nothing goes bang. 
when we turn this back on since we had it disassembled. Let's see what happens. You guys are here for the uh, first power up after disassembly. Okay, that's good. We got it all back together. Everything's good. It's still buzzing away. But I am... I do not have voltage control, which is what we thought. do have a new sense resistor in there. And the voltage is slowly climbing up to 60 volts. And I can ask for 900 milliamps. And I can... No, the voltage collapses at 900 milliamps. Okay. Half an amp, it's, it's awake. All right, then. More troubleshooting to go. Okay. Well, I have spent some time with a very bad schematic. And some interesting things happened. So let's talk about this. So, nope, let's unplug this. Don't, don't want to get shocked. What we have on this unit is we have a controller board here and we have a power amplifier board here. Now, the symptoms that this particular unit are exhibiting is we have current drive. We can pull current from it. We have no voltage control. Well, it turns out this board, which is the A2 board, if I remember correctly, is the current controller board, and it actually sets whether the supply is in constant current or constant voltage mode. Now, we have some op amps here that are doing a lot of that switching, controlling, and comparing. And there's a troubleshooting step in the service manual that essentially says if the output's railed, which it is, and it's in constant current mode, there's really only two parts that go bad. There's a diode CR14 on the A2 board, and there's a transistor uh, Q6 on the power amplifier board. That is most likely the problem. I checked the power amplifier board. Everything's good. Check the... Try to check this diode, and I'm, and I'm really scratching my head because it says the diode's either open or shorted. And... I pretty much just buzzed out every single diode on here, other than the Zener that's right here, and every diode on the board checked fine. So I'm scratching my head going, okay, well, this is what it says to do, and everything's testing, so where do we go from here? Well, let's print out a schematic. I apologize in advance for the crappy schematic, but this is what I was stuck looking at. Even on the computer screen, it looks terrible. Uh, but this is the best schematic I could find. I did order one, order a service manual, but I'm waiting for the PDF to arrive. So, we have our current comparison amplifier, and this is what's actually unhappy, which is why the power supply is in constant current mode, and the power supply is railed to the positive. CR14 right here is the small signal diode that there's a lot of error, the troubleshooting tables tell you should be of interest. So we have U3 to CR14. We also have a 6.2 volt Zener here. There's a CR5 here, and then we have a small capacitor here running around the uh, U3 op amp. So CR14 is a, actually 13 and 14, are both uh, 1N 4148s, uh, 200 milliamp, 75 volt diodes, um, fast, switch, fast switching small signal diodes. Not too hard to source if it was bad. So here's our board in question, and here is our op amp. This is U3. And I was uh, so coming out of pin 6 of U3, which is where we should have our output, we should be able to find a diode to test. Well, pin 6 ties in right there on the PCB. There's three parts missing. So, I have a diode that doesn't exist that's supposedly bad. All right. <laughs> so at this point, here's what I think happened. Given that we had some damage in this power supply with that resistor, and I actually now know what that resistor and relay are doing, and we have some parts that are missing, 
I think I'm starting to figure out a story of what's happened to this poor, poor uh, power supply. There's two models of this, the 6826 and the 6827. I think this is a control board for the 6827 that somehow found its way into the 6826. They're very similar boards, but there are some differences. There are some resistor values that are different, and there are some other things that are different between the two uh, boards. So the units are not 100% interchangeable. So I think this is a 27 control board in a 26 chassis. The resistor that burned up, on the other hand, is part of the output. So the relay, when this unit's off, if you're, because this, this can source and sync current, so it needs to pull some in. So if you push current in, it's got to go somewhere. Well, the relay closes and puts that one ohm resistor across this contact. So I have a sneaking suspicion is something was pushing into this thing, that relay closed, and that one ohm resistor saw a ton of current for whatever was pushing into this thing, some form of power supply or battery or something like that, um, reverse biased and burned up that resistor. So it's just a straight resistor across the contacts. That's what that relay does. And um, I think it just saw too much power and got super, super hot. The other two resistors, which are here, I saw a couple of other videos and this section of the board had started discoloration so these resistors really should be moved further off the board and um, given some air so they could cool a little bit more appropriately I think these are okay I think this was just a design issue with them being too close to the board this is not a not a normal spot to see burn up and this one got pretty toasted I put a very large a one ohm resistor in there to replace it. It's a five watt as opposed to a three. That's what was in there. Uh, five watt, one percent. So we're close to getting a power supply up and running. It, it has a brain. Everything's working. The pass elements are good. So all the tests are good. We've actually got a lot of the recap work done. Did find out we had some bad filters. So these need to get swapped out. I'm going to need a control board to move forward on this. And, uh, move forward on this repair. So, I am now in the market for a control board. The good news is for this supply, the meters are good. So I have meter movement, everything's all right. Clean up some switches, get a control board, and we should be in business. Do an alignment and go from there. So, I'm gonna take, I'm going to put some feelers out for a control board. It's kind of an odd part to need. Not sure how long that's gonna take to source. But if we do end up sourcing one, bringing one into the lab, we'll see what happens. But without completely turning this in from one board to another, there's not much more I can do moving forward on this particular unit. So thanks for stopping by the lab and taking a look at this 6826A. Unfortunately, sometimes dealing with the used market and not knowing the story on some of these devices before I toss them on the bench, some weird stuff happens. But as the patrons have requested. Um, if the camera gets turned on, it does go up to YouTube. Everybody likes seeing... Um, it's been requested that I share the troubleshooting process and try to pass on that experience to you guys. If you like what you're seeing and want to see some more, check out the Patreon page. Patreon's running a little bit ahead on YouTube in terms of video releases, so there's some more content up there. Everything will end up on YouTube at some point. Nothing's behind the paywall. But the patrons that support the channel do help bring videos to YouTube and help keep the lights on here in the lab. And I am eternally grateful for all of their support. So thank you again for supporting the channel. As always, more is on the way. Hit like, subscribe, and all the bell icons. And I will see everybody in the next video.